It was 1915, and the Mexican Revolution had been in full force since 1910. Since the start of the revolution, the country had already had three presidents, Porfirio Diaz, Francisco Madero, and Victoriano Huerta. Under these leaders, Mexico was plunged into chaos as many different factions competed for power. The people of Mexico were left unsatisfied with the leaders, and public approval was low. Then along came a man named Benuisiano Carranza, who declared himself president after a struggle for power with other revolutionaries. Being a moderate in his political career gave hope to some Mexicans that he would stabilize the country and bring an end to armed conflict. Benuisiano Carranza was born on December 29, 1859 in Cuatro Cienas, Mexico. He was the son of a wealthy landowner and his family was upper middle class. This allowed him to go to excellent schools in his youth. He became interested in politics through his inspiration from his idol, Benito Pablo Juarez Garcia, generally known as Benito Juarez, who was the president before Porfirio Diaz. Jose Venustiano Carranza Garza became active in local politics in 1877. This would give him experience for his later presidency. Jose Venustiano Carranza Garza proved himself to be a stubborn but intelligent man, and he was also very stern and having no sense of humor. By 1910, Venustiano Carranza was governor of Cochula. In 1910, he joined Francisco Madero in his struggle against despotic ruler Profirio Diaz. He continued to revolt against the presidents that followed. Carranza joined an alliance with revolutionaries Pancho Villa and Emilio Zapata, and they were successful in getting rid of President Victoriano Huerta, a friend of Diaz, in 1914. After Huerta last presidency, Carranza's army splintered and his previous allies protested his new government. A struggle for power ensued and Carranza won with the support of General Alvaro Obregón's army. Vestiano Carranza is now the provisional president of Mexico. Immediately after Carranza took office, he showed that he had very few radical ideas. In 1917, he called for a constitutional convention to draft a new government. It became an imitation of the classic liberal ideas found in the 1857 Constitution. Many of the convention's delegates disagreed with Carranza about many key points. The new Constitution would allow the government to redistribute land, give more power to common laborers, and restrict the power of the church. Carranza worked with other members of the government and reluctantly accepted provisions for the Constitution to appease his opposition. While Carranza had passed the Constitution into law, by 1919 he had already relaxed on social reforms. He only succeeded in redistributing a small amount of land to the working class. A rich upper class which owned large plantations known as haciendas also still existed. Carranza also ignored his promise of free education. The new Constitution threatened Mexico's relationship with the United States. Its social reforms implied threats to American interests in Mexico. While not much got done under Carranza's presidency, he still succeeded in some regards. One of these was giving women more rights, including ability to divorce, alimony rights, and the ability to own and manage property. Carranza's outsting of Victoriano Huerta as president also destroyed the remains of the Diaz regime. Carranza was successful in commencing social reforms with the new constitution. Although he abandoned the mid-presidency, he was triumphant in keeping neutral during World War I. He also achieved success by opposing intrusive U.S. involvement in Mexican affairs. Throughout Venustiano Carranza's presidency, the rebels Villa and Zapata continued to hold a possible threat against him. 
The straw that broke the camel's back was Carranza's plan to impose his own successor, Ignacio Bonillas. This went against everything the 1910 revolution had stood for. Carranza's old ally, Alvaro Obregón, proceeded to turn against him. He was forced to flee and was killed on May 21, 1920, by one of his own guards, probably working for Obregón. In conclusion, the presidency of Carranza left the Mexican people unsatisfied in many regards. By the end of his term, he had succeeded only in keeping Mexico neutral during the First World War, and he also reduced the U.S.'s involvement in his country. His reforming of Mexico's social structure was fruitless, and he proved to be as corrupt as Diaz by the end. However, the Constitution passed under his leadership gave the outline for social reforms Mexican people had wanted since 1910. So even though Carranza was gone, Mexico was on a path to change.